Rolf and Peter, the president and CEO of MTN Group. Thank you so much for your time. If I was to say to you, can you capture the last 12 months for the MTN Group in a soundbite, Rolf? Would you be able to do that for me? Yeah, the soundbite is, you know, you know, very resilient performance and very challenging macro conditions uh, would be the soundbite, uh, Bronwyn. If you look at those challenging macro conditions, you are making a number of headlines today in terms of adding your voice to those business leaders in South Africa that are very concerned about the potential trajectory for South Africa if we do not fix the issues at hand, i.e. we stand to become a failed state. You have said in your verbiage, it is not too late. What do you want to see being done at this point, Rolf? Yeah, Bronwyn, as you say, you know, our, our results have got quite a few messages. I mean, the, the financial performance is, uh, you know, is very resilient and strong. If you look at whether it's the, the top line, how earnings are doing, dividends uh, and the balance sheet, which is, uh, is very strong. Uh, the, the comment we make really around South Africa is that uh, the unprecedented levels of load shedding, um, you know, are really uh, holding South Africa back from its uh, potential uh, to drive growth. Uh, and deal with some of the issues that we face really around unemployment. Um, and, you know, business and government, you know, have a unique opportunity right now, uh, you know, to come together and actually agree on a very short list of actions that we we all kind of align to, to try and get us back to what we know South Africa is, is, uh, is capable of. I mean, we raise, you know, really three things. I mean, the one is the energy crisis. We're seeing sustained levels of load shedding at four, stage four plus, and we, you know, we describe what the impact has been on our results. I mean, logistics is is a feature of uh, the kind of poor logistics uh, um, that we have in South Africa, or poorer than than uh, our desired, are also holding uh, us back, and as well as crime and corruption. And I'll add youth unemployment in the mix of issues that are bedeviling the the country right now. So um, we have now the state uh, of disaster regulations. And, and as MTN, we say that that's a very unique opportunity for now to uh, be, you know, deal with these issues you know, once and for all. And if I speak specifically to the telecommunications area, uh, in part, yes, um, you know, we've got a, uh, this uh, uh, unprecedented load shedding is not going to be uh, dealt with in the next 18 months uh, or even two years. It's more like a three to five year problem that I think we need to anticipate is that we can take on very determined actions right now that can actually take us forward to ensure that the lights remain on and people can continue to communicate with loved ones and businesses operating with sound telecommunications infrastructure underpinning their businesses. Rolf, as you refer to the strong results, the fintech division or the fintech businesses and the data businesses really coming through strongly for you. I'm sure you can, you're expecting those trends to continue. Are we really encouraged by the trends we've seen in the you know both the data uh, and fintech spaces. Um, you know we've been tracking a graph that shows you know uh, the trends since uh, the start of COVID when COVID ended and then you know uh, the period thereafter. Is that the, you know the, the, there's one consistent message across our markets is that the demand for fint, uh, data and fintech services uh, remains uh, exceptionally strong. Um, you know data traffic has grown up uh, uh, as grow, uh, uh, is up 33 percent. Uh, fintech transaction volumes are also up 33 percent. Uh, you know you know talking to the demands that we still have um, that show that uh, you know financial and digital inclusion is fairly nascent, and that's an opportunity for us uh, to continue to deliver growth over the medium term because that demand uh, you know, you know, still needs to be met and we're very well positioned uh, to be able to capture our fair share actually of that growth. So yeah, very encouraged by the growth we're seeing in data and fintech, but also voice, by the way, you know, many people say, you know, voice is dead. We still had 4% voice growth, including South Africa, where voice went backwards almost 9%. And South Africa is a third of our portfolio. So in the rest of the markets, you know, Voice is very resilient and, and, and continues to be strong. So we continue to be excited about the growth prospects uh, within the context of our industry. And, uh, you know, we think that the kind of financial results we've been able to deliver, we can carry on delivering this uh, over the medium term. 
to look at your massive ecosystem, 289.1 million customers, 19 different countries. And just as a final uh, comment, Rolf, looking at Ghana and Nigeria as two big territories for you alongside South Africa. Yeah, as you say, Ghana and Nigeria are two uh, you know, large markets, um, you know, uh, both facing and kind of different uh, sets of macroeconomic conditions, but uh, all of them kind of at the macro level under pressure. I mean, our businesses continue to be, you know, resilient and strong in both markets. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we're awaiting, um, you know, the, um, you know, the announcement of the cabinet uh, in Nigeria, ultimately, whenever that is being made and what the policy positions of the new government will be. Uh, you know, we're very hopeful that, um, you know, uh, amongst those, you know, issues that will come in the macroeconomic, you know, will be really around, uh, you know, the pegging on the currency, uh, see where that, what, where that goes. Um, as well as, um, you know, clarity, uh, you know, really around, um, you know, uh, some of the other issues that are pulling uh, Nigeria back, uh, not enough oil uh, ending up in the, you know, in, in the fiscus. Uh, so Nigeria can do 2 million barrels a day, but uh, in recent periods, it's more like 900,000 uh, barrels a day. So, yeah, we, we remain very excited about the growth prospects in Nigeria. Uh, and we anticipate that the business... Uh, notwithstanding some of the macro headwinds, will still be able to grow very strongly uh, within that uh, you know macro backdrop. Service revenue in Nigeria we expected about twenty percent, and we expect EBITDA margins to be somewhere between 53, 53 and fifty five percent. So very strong and resilient growth still expected out of Nigeria.